डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर मेडिकल डिवाइसेस एंड इनविटो डायग्नोस्टिक्स इन इंडिया लेक्चर सेवन लेक्चर सेवन दैट इज क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस एंड क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम वॉट इज द क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम वॉट इज द क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस एंड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल ऑफ द मेडिकल डिवाइसेज यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस लेक्चर दिस लेक्चर विल बी गिवेन बाई मिस्टर मलय मित्रा फॉर्मर डिप्टी डक्स कंट्रोलर हु हैव lot of exposure and experience in the regulation of the medical devices and in vitro diagnostics in this lecture you will also understand where the provisions of the quality management system has been given in the medical device regulation in the previous lecture we have discussed that the quality management system medical device rule 2017 fifth schedule has been prescribed fifth schedule has given the details of the quality management system for manufacturing of in vitro diagnostics and medical devices in the country this quality management system where the which is in the line of the internationally accepted quality management system as per iso 13485 that has been prescribed with certain modification what modification we ha we have included in the fifth schedule of the medical device regulation to have the harmonized or clarity on the device master file and the plant master file what will be the details of the requirement all clearly prescribed in the fifth schedule that is the one of the additional part which have been included in the fifth schedule so the manufacturer indigenous manufacturer of the medical devices manufacture of the medical devices which are presently regulated has to confirm the requirement of the quality management system as prescribed in the fifth schedule of the medical device rule 2017 so why this quality management system has been incorporated why not the quality management system because the quality management system have four different major component what will be the component for the quality management system gmp is one of the part of the quality management system in the gmp there is a interaction between the development of the medical devices and gmp but there is a no interaction between design of the medical devices and the good manufacturing practices and also if you see the quality risk management of the medical devices the minimum all there is a minimum interaction between the risk management of the medical devices and the gmp however in the quality management system there is a interaction between the design of the medical devices development of the medical devices with the quality risk of the medical devices and also gmp gmp also included in the quality management system so the detail of the quality management system that you will understand in this lecture why gmp was replaced with the qms the reason also you will understand in the fourth coming that lecture which will be given by mr malay mitra and also during the <clears throat> presentation you will understand what are the quality control parameter for the medical devices and uh, in vitro diagnostics what is the difference of quality control and quality assurance so all those topic you will be understand in the uh, lecture this detail lecture which will be given by mr malay mitra deputy dux controller so concentrate on the lecture and enjoy the lecture if you have any doubt you ask we'll try to clarify that information further in future thank you very much today we are uh, uh, going to go through the quality assurance and quality management system under the new regulations on medical devices this is part of the series of presentations on medical devices and this forms the bedrock of the manufacturing of medical devices this forms part of the iso 13485 which is universally accepted 
and apply it on medical devices all over the world. Now, before we proceed further, let us first understand what is quality assurance. WHO definition of quality assurance is, it's a wide-ranging concept covering all matters that individually or collectively influence the quality of a product. With regard to pharmaceuticals, quality assurance can be divided into four major areas, that is quality control, production, distribution, and inspection. This can be applied to devices also, because all these four parameters in the manufacture of medical device uh, drug are also applied to medical devices. In applying QM, uh, QA system, every aspect of the manufacturing system is controlled at every step in such a manner so that the final product conforms to the requirement. Quality assurance system covers design and development, manufacturing procedures, packaging, manpower, training, release, uh, testing, documents and its control and in any other activity related to the whole process of manufacturing. Uh, what it means is that the QA system is a all-encompassing system which covers everything in the manufacture of a medical device right from the time the raw material enters the plant and it is released as a finished product to go into the market. Even the distribution is covered under Q uh, QMS system. It is. It covers. What does it cover? The quality assurance covers the design of the medical device, its developmental stage before its product is approved for manufacture, the manufacturing procedure, the packaging, containers, the manpower, the people that are working in the plant. It's covered by that training of the manpower, testing, etc., etc., etc. Is quality assurance the same as quality control? This is one of the very, very major confusions in the mind of people who are working in the manufacturing of drugs and medical devices. Is quality assurance the same as quality control? Let us see. Quality control is part of quality management system that fulfills certain requirements of quality assurance system. It means that quality management system has got various verticals one of which is quality control system, a part of it is quality control system. And along with quality control system and other important parameters, the QMS becomes a whole. While quality assurance ensures that and controls the whole process, quality control does the task of inspection and testing. It is therefore clear that quality control forms part of the QA system. Quality assurance ensures the control of the whole process, the whole plant, whole everything. While quality control inspects a particular area and the finished product under the quality management system. It's frequently queried if the product is tested at the end of production, why control the whole process? This is a very common question. I manufacture a medical device in my plant and at the end of the day when it's manufactured and packed, I send it to my laboratory for a complete testing of the medical um, uh, device and it complies to the standards required. So why do I require QA system at all? This was very common in the earlier days. However, it was seen that the medical device failed while in use. And therefore, it was ensured that quality assurance during manufacture ensures that each step, each component, each procedure is under documented control to conform to the requirements. Final testing at the time of release can only ensure the conformance of the product to the physical parameters. What it means is that quality assurance during manufacture ensure that each step, remember each step means manufacturing is, 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 is a combination of different steps in the whole process. So each step, each process is controlled and is controlled by people who are trained for that process and whatever they are doing is written down and documented. And therefore what happens is that you built in quality right from the very beginning to the end. So in case your QMS is very, very strong you may not require to test the final product at the end of the day. And it, it happens quite quite often when the product is very, very costly product. You cannot test it by destroying it. You have to put quality into it so that the final product that goes out conforms to your requirements. Now, a bit of uh, Schedule M3. Schedule M3 GMP for medical devices was effective under the Drug and Cosmetic Rules 1945 as long as the Medical Device Rule 2017 was non-existent. It helped the manufacturer as a guide in the earlier regulations. So, uh, till 2017 end, all manufacturers were following Schedule M3 as a 
good manufacturing practice document. That document was a simplistic document and it gives you yes and no's in manufacturing, what you have to do, what you have not to do. But it was not a comprehensive quality management system as required under 13485 ISO, which is uh, applicable all over the world. So for our manufacturers to uh, follow 13485 so that we are in sync with the rest of the world, this ISO has been adopted by the new regulation. The relevant areas of Schedule M3, however, have been incorporated in the QMS system. So you are not missing out on anything without the Schedule M3 not being there, but you are adding value to the Schedule M3 by way of accepting Schedule uh, ISO 13485. Now ISA 13485 is a mother document. You have to follow 13485 if you want to manufacture medical device. BIS has also got uh, equivalent ISO 13485 which is uh, it has adopted in toto. Now what are the other ISO required under this umbrella 13485? You require ISO 14971 which is an international standard that ISO issued in 2007. The title is Medical Devices Application of Risk Management System. So risk management is covered under this ISO 14971. In case you want to you encounter a risk in the, in the whole process, this will apply and guide you to manage that risk. ISO 10993 is the biological evaluation medical devices. If the medical device has to be evaluated biologically, then this ISO is required to be applied over there. IEC 62366 is the applicability of usability of engineering to medical devices. That's, this is basically engineering, uh, a portion of the ISO under the ISO 13485. ISO also has issued ISO 14969404 medical devices quality management system guidance. Now this ISO is a guidance to the application of 13485. So if you want to apply 13485 into your system in your plant, you have to go through this ISO to understand how to apply that. So it's become very uh, user-friendly ISO in case you want to apply 13485. We will, however, confine ourselves to ISO 13485, which is the quality management system, because going into all these ISOs at a go, will, will it's not possible in one presentation. It will require days and days of understanding and presentations. ISO 45, which is the mother for our quality management system is in the fifth schedule of quality management system for medical devices and in vitro diagnostic medical devices portion of the uh, medical device regulation 2017. The fifth schedule of the medical device rule 2007 describes in detail the quality management system that has to be followed by a medical device establishment. The fifth schedule has eight paragraphs describing each and every aspect of the quality management system that a firm needs to follow. Important paragraphs have been enumerated in the following slides to give an idea of QMS. Anybody having some interaction with ISO 9000 will understand the relevance of the schedule. Part 1, general requirements. Among other things, it says that QMS is complemented to technical requirements for products and do not replace them. This is important. If you have technical requirements of a product, they are not to be replaced with QMS. QMS will complement and help those technical requirements reach its uh, ultimate goal. Part 2 is applicability. The provisions of the schedule shall be applied applicable to manufacture of finished devices, in vitro diagnostic medical devices, mechanical contraceptives, condoms, intrauterine devices, tubal rings, Surgical dressings, surgical bandages, surgical staplers, surgical sutures and ligatures, blood and blood component collection bags with or without anticoagulants. These items have been notified in the Dragon Cosmetics Act and uh, under the Act and in case there are other items which are added under the Act and notified, they will also fall in this part to applicability portion. Terms and definitions. Part 3 is the terms and definitions in the uh, regulations. The para gives the definitions of certain devices which are as follows. 3.1 is active implantable medical device. 3.2 is active medical device. 3.3 is advisory note. 3.4 is customer complaint. 3.5 is implantable medical device. 3.18. 
I have picked up the relevant paragraphs, so there are there may be a few paragraphs in between which are uh, not as important as these. But if you go through these paras, you can understand those paras also. 3.18 is a very important para. Validation means confirmation by examination and provision of objective evidence that the particular requirement for a specific intended use can be consistently fulfilled. That means you may come across the word validation in this uh, whole regulations here and there or not even here, maybe in other documents that you go through internationally. Now what does validation mean? Validation means you confirm by examination and provisions of objective evidence that whatever you are doing in a particular manufacturing activity can be consistently fulfilled. 3.18.1 is the process validation which means establishing by objective evidence that a process consistently produces a result or product meaning its predetermined specifications. I am sure the language is very simple to understand but in case you want to understand further from this I can explain that process validation is a system by which you have to divide first of all you have to divide the whole process A to Z into small segments. Now each segment does its small work to change the raw material into the final product. Each of those segments have to be validated as a simple process, separate entity and the process. Now once you do that, that process validation will, has, has, will prove or it will verify that the end result of that process is consistent batch after batch, product after product. 3.18.2 Design validation means establishing by objective evidence that device specifications conform with users need and intended users. Design validation comes into place when you design a product. You have to design a product before it goes into commercial manufacturing. Therefore, when you are the drawing board designing a product for a particular activity in the human body, you have to have this design qualification done and validate that whole design before you go in for actual manufacturing. 3.19 is verification means confirmation by examination and provision of objective evidence that specified requirements have been fulfilled. In this case, verification means actually in a way, in a simple language, it is testing basically. You have to have objective evidence as with specific requirement. That means you have to verify that a particular item is say, six inches long at a particular process. It, you have to verify that it is six inches long in that process which has been verified by process validation. Para 4, quality management system, general. The manufacturer shall establish document, implement and maintain a quality management system that and maintain its effectiveness in accordance with the requirement of the schedule. That means he shall establish a QMS, he shall document everything that is done over there in the QMS and implement that in the plant to maintain the quality management system. The manufacturer shall identify the process needed for quality management system and their application throughout the organization. He has to identify the processes, the small processes that I mentioned earlier. Those processes have to be identified by the management and they have to be uh, put forward for uh, as a part of the validation system. B, determine the sequence and interaction of these processes. That means one process, process A will precede process B and process B will precede process C. You can't have process A and then process F and come back to process B. The sequence have to be established and the interaction of these processes. One process will follow the next process, the sequence and the interaction of these processes have to be established. Determine criteria and methods needed to ensure that both the operation and control of these processes are effective. You have to have a criteria and a system by which you have to ensure that both the operations and control, operations means you are doing it regularly a process and control means that that regular process that you are doing is controlled by way of a method. So these have to be effective and this the management has to establish. D. Ensure the availability of resources and information necessary to support the operation and monitoring these processes. Remember, Resources means not only money, resources means manpower, resources means machinery, resources mean any other thing that is required to
to monitor the process. So the management should ensure the availability of everything that is required to ensure the QMS system. Management should monitor, measure, and analyze the, these processes. We have seen that this is this is part of the validation and uh, verification process. Implement actions necessary to achieve planned results and maintain the effectiveness of the process. Implement actions necessary to achieve planned results. That means, in case if a result that you're getting um, uh, is is not what you require, then you have to implement and change that method so that the end result remains the same year after year, month after month. These processes shall be managed by the manufacturer in accordance with the requirements of the schedule. Where a manufacturer chooses to outsource any process that affects product conformity with requirements, the manufacturer shall ensure control over such processes. Control of such outsourced processes shall be identified within the quality management system. Notice that processes needed for the quality management system referred to above shall include process of management activities, provision of resources, product realization, and measurement. Uh, second line is very important. It says that when a manufacturer chooses to outsource any process that affects the product conformity with, re with requirements, that means I manufacture a medical device, a part of it or a component of it is being manufactured by somebody else under con my contract. Now, in, in that case, I am responsible for the QMS of that contract manufacturer's process also. So, I, I have I am I am have added responsibility for that. Part four point two is documentation requirement. This is extremely important. Extremely important. Generally, the quality management system documentation shall include documented statements of quality policy and quality objectives, a quality manual, documented procedures required by the schedule, document needed to the manufacturer to ensure the effective planning, operation, and control processes records records required by this schedule. Remember, uh, a, a document is not just statement of quality and quality objective. That is, of course, over there. We find them framed and put on the walls in the company. That is very important to remind the people working over there the quality policy and uh, the systems. However, each activity that is carried out in the plant, each when I say each activity, I mean each activity, right from the way the personnel are recruited, trained, put into operation, how a switch in a machinery is operated, all these have to be documented. And each one of the actions that is taken care of is again documented that that process has been done. So documentation is the extremely important uh, objective of QMS. In case of documentation, the benefits are that in case something goes wrong somewhere, we can trace the source of the problem with the help of documents. Documents are interlinked and you can go down to the source of the problem and rectify that. Customer focus. This is, we know, need to emphasize that customer requirements are determined and are met. Management of the manufacturer shall ensure. That means, if I manufacture something, a pen or a whatever, it has to be to the satisfaction of the ultimate end user who is the customer. So, our production should be customer focused. 5.3 is quality policy. What is the quality policy of a plant? Quality policy is top management of the manufacturer shall ensure that a quality policy is appropriate to the purpose of the manufacturing facility. You can't have a quality policy of something else applied to your plant. It should be appropriate to the purpose of the manufacturing that I am doing. Include a commitment to comply with the management requirements and to maintain the effectiveness of quality management system. Provides a framework for establishing and reviewing quality objectives. Is communicated and understood within the manufacturer's organization and is reviewed for continuing suitability. These Each of these lines are self-explanatory and they don't need to be uh, elaborated further. Responsibility, authority and communication. 5.5.1 Responsibility and authority. Top management of the manufacturer shall ensure that the responsibility authorities are defined, documented and communicated within the manufacturing organization. Top management of the manufacturer shall establish the inter relation of all personnel who manage, perform and verify work affecting quality and shall ensure the independence and authority necessary to perform these tasks. Uh, we must ensure, we must emphasize over here rather that in this case, the ISO or QMS has roped in the top management of the company. 
the directors or whoever the owners, they are also responsible for quality. It is not only the shop floor people or the technical people. The top management shall ensure the necessary resources and facilities are provided and they shall be held responsible if it is not there. Management representative. Who is a management representative? This is a management representative you can find in ISO 9000 also. Now that is a replica, this is a replica of that only. Top management shall appoint a member of management who irrespective of other responsibilities shall have responsibility and authority to that include ensuring that a process needed for the quality management system are established, implemented and maintained. Reporting to top management on the performance of the quality management system and any need for improvement and ensuring the promotion of awareness of regulatory and customer requirement throughout the manufacturing organization. That means top management shall appoint a member of management. That means top management system, the directors will appoint a person as a management, their, their representative for overseeing the whole process of QMS. He shall be responsible for as a communicating link between the top management and the, uh, uh, the plant to pass on the messages and improve things. Management review, general. Top management shall review the organization's quality management system at planned intervals to ensure its continuing suitability, adequacy and effectiveness. This is also the responsibility given to the top management. The top management cannot say that since I am a top management, I am a director of the company or we are the directors of the company, so we are not responsible for this. They are fully responsible as per this para 5.6.1. This review shall include assessing opportunities for improvement and the need for changes to the quality management system, including the quality policy and quality objective. Records from management reviews shall be maintained. It does not mean that the top management can be an expert or should be an expert in a particular medical device. He has to sit down with the uh, management representative and the technical persons and discuss and decide for going forward further. Human resources, general. Human resources means people working in the plant. Anybody, it can be the, the guard at the gate to the technical person who is actually overseeing the production. Person, persons performing work affecting product quality shall be competent on the basis of appropriate education, training, skills and experience. Number of persons employed shall be adequate and in direct proportion to the work. These are all simple, easy to understand sentences. Prior to employment, all personnel shall undergo medical examination including eye examination and shall be free from communicable or contagious diseases. Thereafter, they shall be medically examined periodically at least once a year. Records shall be maintained thereof. Personnel performing work affecting the first line, affecting product quality shall be competent on the basis of appropriate education, training, skills and experience. Now, as I gave the example of gate, the guard over there may allow a truck containing material to come inside the plant after examining the suitable suitability of documents to show that the plant requires that and then verify and then allow. So everybody that is working in a plant has some sort of responsibility under the QMS and he has to follow that. 6.2.2 Competence, awareness and training. The manufacturer shall determine the necessary competence of personnel performing work affecting quality. Provide training or take other actions to satisfy these needs. Evaluate the effectiveness of the actions taken. Ensure that its personnel are aware of the relevance and importance of the activities and how they contribute to the achievement of the quality objective. Maintain appropriate records of education, training, skills and experience and establish documented procedures for identifying training needs and ensure that all personnel are trained and adequately uh, perform the assigned response. These, all these uh, provisions were there in Schedule M3 in a different language. So this is not something new for any manufacturer. Training is very important and we know that training is uh, actually improves quality. So they have to be trained. The evaluation of the training has to be done of the people who are taking the training. Then uh, they should be made aware of what they are doing. These are all records have to be maintained of the training. These all are there in Schedule M3, but in this it's the language of ISO basically which uh, explains them. Infrastructure. We come to the brick and mortar now. 
The organization shall determine, provide, and maintain the infrastructure needed to achieve conformity to the product requirement. Infrastructure includes as applicable buildings, workspace, and associated utilities, process equipment, both hardware and software, and supporting services such as transport or communication. The manufacturer shall establish documented requirements for maintenance activities, including their frequency, when such activities or lack thereof can affect product quality, record of such maintenance shall be maintained. Now, this is very easy to understand. Uh, when they say that uh, infrastructure means building workspace and associated utilities, uh, it does not simply mean that you should have a building and workplace. Building and workplace are again controlled by different paragraphs. What kind of building you require, what is the infrastructure you require, the workspace, process equipment, those are covered elsewhere. But this actually tells you that all these have to be controlled under the infrastructure 6.3. Working environment. The organization shall determine the, and manage the work environment created to achieve conformity to product requirements. So, the environment that is used for the manufacture of these products should conform to the product requirements. Remember, the product should not conform to the environment, but the environment should be designed for whatever the product finally is. Following requirements shall be shall apply, namely, the manufacturer shall establish document requirements for health, cleanliness, and clothing of all personnel. If contact between such personnel and the product or work environment could adversely affect the quality of the product, that means, in simple language, if a, if an operation requires that the personnel shall wear gloves and full body suit, that's part of it. If, if they require to wash their hands and feet before entering an area, that forms part of the environment. B says, if work environment conditions can have an adverse effect on the product quality, the manufacturer shall establish documented provision requirements as per annexure A, which is later on, of the schedule for the work environment conditions and documented procedures for work instructions to monitor and control these work environment conditions. The manufacturer shall ensure that all personnel who are required to work temporarily under special environmental conditions within the work environment are appropriately trained and supervised by trained personnel. What does it mean? What does the C mean? C simply means in our layman's term that who are required to work temporarily means either they are temporarily appointed for short term basis to work in that environment or if I take it to a different level altogether, if a machine in a special environment is broken down and the maintenance people have to enter the premises, he works there temporarily. So he shall be trained for that environment properly. If appropriate, general special arrangements shall be established and documented for the control of contaminated or potentially contaminated products in order to prevent contamination of the product, the work environment or personnel. So, if a product has to be sterile, we have to have documented and established control of such product manufacturing. Special arrangement means it should have a clean room, clean air supply, and all those stuff. So, uh, the product personnel as well as the product is saved from contamination. All personnel shall bear clean body appropriate to the duties, smoking, eating, drinking, chewing or keeping food and drink shall not be permitted in production, laboratory storage. This is part of the lame 3, which very clearly says these things. Customer communication. The manufacturer shall determine and implement effective arrangements for communicating with the customer in relation to product information, inquiries, contract or other handling including amendments, customer feedback including customer complaints and advisory notes. So, a manufacturer is not only uh, the product of the manufacturer should not only be oriented towards the physician or the person who is going to <coughs> apply those products on a human body but even <coughs> the customer himself in case it's a patient the patient has to have the product information too purchasing process 7.4.1 the manufacturer organization shall establish documented procedures to ensure that purchased product conforms to specified purchase requirement. The type and extent and control applied to the supplier and the purchased product shall be independent upon the effect of the purchased product on subsequent product realization 
or the final product. The manufacturer shall evaluate and select suppliers based on their ability. This paragraph basically is vendor evaluation in a common GMP terms. Whenever you want to purchase a particular item from outside, you have to evaluate that product that it that the product that you're purchasing is conforming to your uh, uh, final product and it's uh, useful in that case. The vendor that is supplying to you is conforms to quality management uh, system and he is able to supply you that product of consistent quality uh, time after time. So it's vendor selection, evaluation and re-evaluation shall be carried out. Verification of purchased product. This is basically in common terms is uh, uh, it is testing of the raw materials purchased, but in this case in medical devices it may well go beyond the verification that is required for drugs. The manufacturer shall establish and implement the inspection or other activities necessary for ensuring that purchased product meets specified purchase requirements. You may have to visit the vendor's premises to inspect it or carry out anything else to ensure that the purchase product meets the specified purchase requirements. You have certain criteria uh, for that purchase uh, uh, purchase product, and by way of any uh, any means, including inspection, you have to ensure that the manufacturer of that product can supply you that product as per your requirements. Where the manufacturer intends to perform verification at the supplier's premises, the manufacturer shall state the intended verification arrangements and methods of product release in the manufacturing purchasing information. Records of the verification shall be maintained. That means you are also responsible for the product's quality at the supplier's premises also. Paragraph related to GMP. Now, GMP forms a part of QMS. So these are some of the paragraphs which are actually related to GMP. Some of the paragraphs that I mentioned earlier also confirm to GMP requirement. These are specific that I picked up for our understanding. Production and service provisions. 7.5.1 control of production and service provisions. 7.5.1.1 under this para says general requirement. The manufacturer shall plan and carry out production and service provisions under controlled conditions. Controlled conditions shall include as applicable wherever required the availability of information that the, that describes the characteristics of the product, the availability of documented procedures, documented requirements, work instructions and reference material and reference measurement procedures are necessary, the use of suitable equipment, use the availability and use of monitoring and measuring devices. So this is the general requirement of a manufacturing process as required. Followed by the implementation of monitoring and measuring equipment is the implementation of release, delivery and post-delivery activities. That means not only you release the product and deliver it, even post-delivery activities you have to uh, implement as per the requirement of that particular product. The, package, the implementation of defined operations for labeling and packaging. The manufacturer will establish and maintain a record of each batch of medical device or in vitro diagnostic medical device that provides traceability and identifies the amount manufactured and amount approved for distribution. The batch record shall be verified and approved. The last para is very important and is well known in the manufacturing circles of pharma. You have to have a batch record, that means you are manufacturing a batch of say 20 products, 20 medical devices, then that 20 batch record should be there. Uh, giving all details of that the raw material, the manufacturing process, the release uh, and distribution uh, documents, etc. And these shall be verified by somebody over the person who is preparing these and approved. 7.5.1.2 Control of Production and Service Provisions, Specific Requirements. Point one of that is cleanliness of product and contamination control. The manufacturer shall establish documented requirement for cleanliness of the product. If product is cleaned by the manufacturer prior to sterilization or its use, or product is supplied non sterile to be subjected to a cleaning process prior to sterilization or its use, or product is supplied to be used non sterile and its cleanliness is of significance in use, or process agents are to be removed from the product during manufacture. Now this is this is this is something which you did between the lines actually. The product is to be clean. We understand that it has to be clean. Now 
the level of cleanliness depends on its use. It can be manufactured by you uh, and ser made sterile by sterilization process and packaged and sold. It can be sterilized before use by the user or it can be sold non-sterile too. Sometimes what happened is process agents are to be removed from the product. In case of, uh, I can give you a very simple example of uh, process agents. In case of uh, ethylene oxide sterilization, we find that ethylene oxide gas is used for sterilization of certain items like syringes or, or Tyvek paper packed products. Now, in case you want to sell that product, we must ensure that ethylene oxide is zero in the product after it's sterilized. So anything that is used in the process has to be removed, which are not required in the final product. Installation activities. If appropriate, the manufacturer to establish document requirements require which, which contain acceptance criteria for installing and verifying the installation of a medical device in or in vitro diagnostic medical device. If the agreed customer requirement allow installations to be performed other than by the manufacturer authorized agent, the manufacturer shall provide documented requirements for installation and verification. Records of installation verification performed by the manufacturer as authorized agent shall be maintained. Now, we are a bit confused in this. We all are because how do you install a medical device? This is not for the medical devices which are notified at the moment. These are for those medical devices which are large, for instance, the MRI machine or X-ray machine, which are actually installed in the manufacturing premises. In such cases, the manufacturer shall provide the necessary no know-how and the manpower to install that the premises. If they can't, they must provide the necessary documents for a third party to install that machine in that premises. Particular requirements for sterile medical devices. This is very important because a lot of medical devices moving in the market which are high-end class D risky medical devices are sold sterile. These medical devices either usually go into the human body for, for um, uh, use or Puncture the human body for use. The manufacturer shall maintain records of the process parameters for sterilization process which was used for each sterilization batch. Sterilization records shall be traceable to each product batch of the production batch of the medical device. This is very simple. We know that whenever you want to sterilize something, the parameters of the sterilization are to be maintained. What kind of sterilization? Is there steam, dry heat, ethylene oxide, or gamma radiation? Each batch that goes through it has to be documented and recorded in the manufacturing records. 7.5.2 Validation of process for production and service provision. We had a glimpse of validation earlier. Now in this it's much more in detail. 7.5.2.1 says in general, the manufacturer shall validate any process or production and service provisions where the resulting output cannot be verified by subsequent monitoring or measurement. This includes any processes where deficiencies become apparent only after the product is in use. Validation shall demonstrate the ability of these processes to achieve planned result. There are a lot of medical devices, we know very well that what are medical devices there which cannot be, uh, the usage of that product cannot be validated by way of end product testing at the end of the production cycle. So in that case, the manufacturer has to validate each process that is going on uh, in the manufacturing that which is of course designed carefully for that particular process so that at the end of the day even if the product is not tested it complies with your standards. Manufacturers shall establish documented procedures for the evaluation of, uh, evaluation of the application of computer software and ch uh, changes to the such software. Now in this case it's a computer software validation uh, in the no devices that are notified at the moment do not require any computer or software for their running. These are required in high-end uh, medical devices <coughs> which are actually uh, of the range of um, uh, say MRI, X-ray machines and all those equipment which require a software for uh, its running and application. So that software or computer system has to be validated again. Particular requirements for sterile medical devices. This it's 7.5.2.2, it's the extension of 7.5.2. Manufacturer shall establish documented procedure of the validation of sterilization process. Sterilization process shall be validated prior to initial use. The records of validation of each sterilization process will be maintained. We already saw that as a, as a batch, we saw that, that each batch has to be validated. In this case, each production cycle of a sterilization process has to be again 
uh, validated and recorded. Traceability 7.5.3.2.1 is general. The manufacturer shall establish documented procedures for traceability. Such procedures shall define the extent of product traceability and the records required. Where traceability is a requirement, the manufacturer shall control and record the unique identification of the product. That means what happens is once the product goes into the market in use and it, 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 it malfunctions, we have to backtrace from the product to the manufacturer, to the production cycle, to the batch. So this is actually traceability. And in case of intra-plant traceability, we can trace a particular process to a batch to a person who made that, uh, who activated that process and who responsible. So traceability of, uh, of an action in a manufacturing plant is extremely important to troubleshoot problems later on. Manufacturer shall requ require that its agent or distributors maintain record of the distribution of active implantable medical device and implantable medical device to allow traceability and that such records are available for inspection. Records of name address of the shipping package consignee shall also be maintained. So it's a comprehensive record keeping of the whole product. 7.6 Control, monitoring and measuring devices. These are uh, devices which actually control and record and measure unit quantities of anything. For instance, it can be um, temperature, pressure, relative humidity, or length, breadth, which, is, which has a quantifiable uh, value. The manufacturer shall determine the monitoring and measurement to be undertaken and the monitoring and measuring devices needed to provide evidence of conformity of the product to determine requirements. The manufacturer shall establish documented procedures to ensure that monitoring and measurement and measurement can be carried out and are carried out in a manner that is consistent with the monitoring and measurement requirements. So the monitoring and measurement requirements are controlled by monitoring and measurement equipments, which are again dependent on what is the requirement of the product. The product requires a, a length of 6.5 inches. The instrument required for that measurement should be calibrated for that particular item now and then recalibrated so that anything that is going on in the plant which can be identified by a value has a machinery or equipment or instrument which is actually proper calibrated and used regularly internal audit <coughs> now what's an internal audit the manufacturers will conduct internal audits at planned intervals to determine whether the quality management system conforms to the planned arrangements to the maintenance to the requirements of the schedule and to the quality management system requirements established by the manufacturer and is ethically implemented and maintained. What is internal audit? Internal audit is basically a self-inspection of the plant by its own. Internal audit is different from external audit in which an external agency carry out, carries out an audit. For a regulator to carry out an inspection, it's an external audit. But internal audit is carried out, it's an internal inspection sort of, you can say, in which uh, selected personnel from the plant carry out the audit of the plant as per the requirement a thorough honest audit to find out uh, the requirements that are actually falling out of specifications or improvements that are required to be done and records of such have to be uh, maintained properly an audit program shall be planned now this is an internal audit program shall be planned taking into consideration the status and importance of the process and areas to be audited as well as the pre results of previous audits that means if there's a simple process, you need not do the audit, internal audit on a regular basis. But if it's a critical process, that internal audit has to be done properly and documented. The audit criteria, scope, frequency, and methods shall be defined. Selection of auditors and, con uh, and conduct of audit shall be ensured the objectivity and impartiality of such audits. I mean, it's needless to say that audit has to be extremely impartial. You can't be partial to a particular area during the audit because that particular area has uh, one of the persons whom you like. So it has to be impartial. And it's best, best to avoid uh, auditing those areas by interested people of the plant. Have neutral, impartial people auditing those areas. Auditors shall not audit their own work. Very important, as I mentioned, a laboratory audit cannot be done by a person from the laboratory. It has to be from somebody other than the laboratory area. The responsibilities and requirements of for planning and conducting audits and for reporting results and maintaining records shall be 
defined in a documented procedure. The management responsible for the area be, uh, being audited shall ensure that the actions are taken without undue delay and eliminate detected unconformities and their causes. Follow-up activities shall include the verification of the actions taken and the reporting of the verification result. After an audit, you have to prepare a non-conformity report or an audit report in which it has to be mentioned and highlighted the shortcomings and an action taken to be time to be given and the, the conformities have to be, uh, the, the deficiencies have to be conformed to the requirements within that particular time period. Corrective action. Manufacturers shall take in take action to eliminate the cause of current conformities in order to prevent recurrence. Corrective action shall be appropriate to the effective uh, to the effects of the non-conformities content. I explained earlier also. Corrective action is simply removing the defects and recording it. Preventive action. The manufacturer shall determine action to eliminate the cause of the potential conformities in order to prevent their occurrence. Preventive action will be appropriate to the effects of the potential problems. Preventive action is basically preventive maintenance is one can be preventive action likewise. And lecture A refer to sub paragraph 6.4b environmental requirement for medical devices and in vitro diagnostic medical devices. And lecture A which forms part of the fifth schedule describes the environmental class requirement for manufacturing of different type of devices. Now we have different classifications class from, uh, a, B, C, D, E, particle count, grade A, grade B, grade C, all these requirements will conform to the requirement of your product. The fifth schedule of medical device rule which describes the quality management system has to be supplemented with various other objective material which clearly gives absolute values. Some of these documents can be detailed, product specification, personal, hygiene requirements, procedure for actual data collection and recording, etc. The operations need to be authorized and validated as required under the KMS. That, friends, in nutshell, is quality management system. If you have any queries, you can get back to us, and we shall make our every effort to um, answer your queries and remove your doubts. Now, some of the question and answers over are over here. Very simple one. However, you will be getting much more questions and answers. We have to submit later on for assessment. Thank you very much.